basically what it is is the log is kind of a smiley face once I started it was too late it was too late to undo it Hey, welcome back to the channel. We are out here today at the sawmill and we're going to be needing another 12 foot long six by six. So it's just as obviously about 16 foot long. So this is a big log. However, it's pretty thin. I'm gonna take you step by step and each time we make a cut, I'll talk to you about why I'm doing each cut. I'd like your feedback. Uh, we're learning, uh, we're, we're, we've been cutting now about three years and it seems like every day I learn a little bit more from you guys. So. Let's get to it. So one, one quick thing I always make sure to, before I set a log on, I want at least a small backstop up. Uh, it, it sounds like common sense, but there's been a time or two that I got into a rush and decided I was just gonna set it up on the sawmill and, and then I put the backstops up later. And then as I backed away with a tractor, I seen the, the log roll off the back of the sawmill. So that's, that's never any fun. So always make sure you put your backstops up. I've got John here, he's my good friend okay. and we're going to uh, cut up a 16 foot long six by six tulip poplar for the greenhouse. Now it's not gonna be a perfect six by six. I'm not sure that we can actually get a perfectly square can all the way down. Doesn't really have to be. And if it has a little wane down the side, it's gonna add some character. What we're gonna do is take you step by step of our decision making process. We've already set the log up on the uh, sawmill and we'll go from there. So this log is going to be, let's see, it's about 10 inches on this and it's gonna be a, gonna be not a lot to it. This end down here is a little bit thicker. It's about 12 inches, so I've lost two inches down there. And uh, I've already measured it. It's about 16 and a half foot long. Let's we'll see what we can do with it. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and push it to the back stop. Should we grab that one over there? Certainly. And then we'll, See if we can make our first cuts. I feel like that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and aim that one down. Now, the reason I always aim this down here is because uh, I have almost nicked the blade going by that before. So close that it would have shaved. Throughout cutting the log, I'm gonna take the blade guide and keep it as close to the edge of the log as I can. The closer you can keep the blade guide to the log, the less of a wavy cut, the, the better cut your cut's gonna be. And when the blade is really sharp, that doesn't come into play as much, but as your blade comes to the end of its life and needs to be sharpened, uh, it wants to uh, wander up and down a little bit more. And if you keep your blade guide closer, that, that will help with that. So to adjust the blade guide on this front here, you just you pick this lever up. You see these, these little teeth on the bottom. You just pick it up to where you want it, get it close to it, set it down. Now I always have this habit, it's a good habit to get into, is to look down your log. You wanna make sure that you're never, not gonna hit anything. So that's a good habit to get into. So I'm raising my, my blade up, I'm looking down the log. We want the center of the log, there's a pith that runs down the center of each tree and that's called a pith. You'll see it like there's more cracks in the center or you can see the mark of the center of the log. And that is, it is your weakest point, but when you're building a post, when you're making a post, you wanna keep that pith as close to the center of the post as you can. If you get off, 
you basically have more strands of wood pulling on one side than you do the other, and that's where you get your bowls. So you want to stay as close to the center of the pith as you can. Now this log has been on the ground for a good while, and you can see here, this is the pith. So I will try my best to work uh, this towards the center. There is no such thing as a perfect pith running down the center. We're still going to have to keep it as, you know, work within the confines of this log, but you want to try to keep the center, this as center as possible. And you look at both ends and kind of get an idea of how, um, how the pith runs through the, through the log. It's harder the longer the log is, the more variation the pith will have. So if you're doing eight foot boards, you can do a lot better about guessing where the pith's gonna go. A log this long, we're just gonna have to assume it's, you know, we just don't know. So the throat of your sawmill, or the throat of this sawmill, is five and seven eighths of an inch cut. If, he, if you can't cut anything deeper than five and seven eighths of an inch. So what I have here is I have an irregularity, which is just a limb uh, sticking off. We're just gonna go ahead and knock this off. Out. Plus it's a, it's a uh, knot, so it's gonna be harder. So this morning we came in, we've, the, my blade is, not super sharp. Uh, I think we'll get through this log before we need to change it again. But we come through, we've cleaned the sawmill, we've checked the sawmill, we service the sawmill. So before you just come out here, this thing's been sitting in the woods for you know a week, check your oils, check your, make sure there's no mice or, we used to have, we, we had a mouse living inside of the, uh, of the door closed. We leave the door open now. We called him Frontier, but he had he got evicted. So just make sure you service it up. I think we're ready to go. We'll start off at 10 inches from the, I know that that end's about 12 inches. This end's about 11 right here. We're gonna start our first cut at uh, 10 inches off of the deck. tell John was over here yesterday or last time we cut on the sawmill he was over here working with me and we were uh, we were working that oak and uh, let me tell you what this tulip poplar is a lot lighter yes yeah that right there that oak was them, them big uh, 12 foot long oak six by sixes were tough or just the pieces that we were taking off So this has a pretty nice uh, green tint to it. I like it. Kind of a rainbowish look. I'm gonna roll this uh, forward just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put the longer backstops in. Well, you know what? Let's take these and just turn them around. Go all the way up as high as we can get them. Short ones. You want the hook to the back? Yeah. I don't, you know what, let's turn them sideways. So we can get as much flat. I'm gonna have to pull mine back a little bit more. Me too. I don't believe there's no way we would ever do that with an oak log this long, even if it was this skinny. I agree with you. Oh yeah, that's cool. All right, I'm gonna let that sit right there. Okay. And then pull, pull my side back a little bit. And I, I think like it's gonna, touching. Yeah, we're gonna have to put the long stops up though. And I'll let it roll back then. I, I think I can hold it right here.
angle to the back. I just got it sideways. Okay, the first thing we're gonna, once we got that first cut done here, we're gonna rotate this thing over. And it's really, really, really important to get this flat cut even with these back stops. And if you don't, you're gonna, your wood's not gonna be square. So that's the most important thing we can do right now. Uh, I think we're pretty good. I think we just crank, crank down the dog logs or log dogs in the front. Yeah, this got a big old bow in it. I don't know if we're gonna get a 16 foot can out of this or not. It's got a huge bow in it, a lot, lot more than showed when I first. I wonder if we could raise that end up and then put something up under it and then take a little bit. I think we can save it if we, if we do that. Are you ready? That's going to help a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, all we need is to save a little bit of this cant. It's a, basically what it is is the log is kind of a smiley face. And if I can if I can level the smiley face up on both ends, I can touch, cut the high spots off of each end and save a little bit more. We might still get a six by six out of this. It's not important, like I said, if this is if the cant's not exactly square. So this portion might show, but if we can, we'll go ahead and cut the other side and see if we can save this and make a pretty good six by six out of it. We'll just have to shave it down a little bit at a time. We'll rotate it over and see what we got. I don't know. I don't know if I should take one more cut. I don't think so. I don't think so. We'll just see what happens. This is the fun thing about working with logs because there's, they're not, uh, they're not necessarily anything normal about them. They're, they're always unique. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna spin it out. Thank you. Okay, that one. You want me to? No, I think we're good. We're gonna, we can put the small backstops. Yeah, but oh, it ain't over. I thought it was not over all the way. There, there we, we go. go. I gotta put the yeah. Okay. I'm put about three inches up. I'm just going to catch a piece of what you cut. Yeah. Let's get this thing cranked up. We'll see if we can make us another couple cuts. We may be able to come back and cut some more on the bottom and, and clean that up a little bit, but we'll, we'll do this side first.
little bit of tension on that one. What we'll do is we're going to take as little as we can off of this top and still have it reasonably square and then we'll go to the other side and take more off that'll that'll cause it to uh, be as square as we can get it if you want perfection wood is probably not the medium you should work in that's my professional opinion so I'm going to go down to seven inches right here and then uh, that'll give me one more inch to take off the other side and honestly that's going to put our pith pretty close to center so i feel pretty good about that all right here we go I've seen that. I didn't realize how high that how that come up. I wished I had have made a little shallower, more shallow cut. And but once I made the, once I started, it was too late. It was too late to undo it. I think one log dog will get this one. I'm gonna go ahead and take my last cut down to six inches, and that'll give me as much off of this side as I can take, make it as square as possible. And I'll get a nice little one inch board out of this. I'm gonna rotate it one more time. And take the last possible cut we can get off of this side. This will go down to six inches. I think one log dog will get it. I don't see anything in, nope. There's nothing gonna hit that. Good. Yeah, I should have, if I could do it over again, I, that last cut on the other side, I would have cut a half inch shallower but once you start cutting, it's pretty much a done deal. So we're going to go all the way down to six inches. And let's see what we come up with.
So this still turned out really good. I, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I think it's going to be fine for what we're doing with it. It's more ornamental than it actually is going to be uh, for strength. It will, it will provide some strength, but it's not, it's not really that big a deal. However, if I have taken one half inch less cut over here, I would about knocked all this wane off on this side. Again, it's no big deal. It's still, still a win in my book, and uh, it's going to be an awesome addition to the greenhouse. Listen, I hope this was helpful. Uh, we're just taking you through our mistakes. What I, what I, what my mistakes. I'll say my mistakes because John didn't make no mistakes. He, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 pretty sharp. Anyway, listen, I appreciate you watching our channel, and I hope this is helpful. If you like this type of video, please leave a. A comment uh, asking or ask me questions or ask me to show you how I do things uh, I take for granted a lot of times that other people uh, n know everything that I know and I know there's a lot of people that know more than I know so there there if, if you know more than I know make a comment tell me what I can do better if you want me to do a subject or sh show you something specific on how to do something on the sawmill please leave a comment in the comment section below God bless have a great day So this portion might show, but if we can, we'll go ahead and cut the other side and see if we can save this and make a pretty good six by six out of it. We'll just have to shave it down a little bit at a time. We'll rotate it over and see what we got. I don't know.